Day two of the budget debate got underway at 9 o'clock this morning inside the National Assembly building. Area representative for Pickstock and Minister of Foreign Affairs, Wilfred Ellerington, began the debate with his contribution. According to Ellerington, the stability in a time of change budget cannot be described as a doomsday budget. This budget, like all the budgets of the, this administration under the right honorable um, um, Prime Minister, Dean Oliver Barrow, shows a uh, projected revenue, I'll deal only with the revenue, of one billion and eighty-eight million five hundred and thirty-nine thousand five sixty-eight dollars. The revenue, projected revenue for last year, was one million, one billion and thirty-one million a hundred and fourteen thousand four hundred and thirty-four. So this one is an increase over last year. It grew actually by some 57 million, as far as my reckoning is concerned. In relation to the ministry that I am responsible for, the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, I note that the allocation for this year is 21 million 692 thousand seven hundred and eight dollars and the revenue for last year 2015-2016 was sixteen million nine hundred and seventy nine thousand two hundred and fifty eight dollars which again is an increase of some four point five million dollars this allocation for the ministry of foreign affairs will be able to finance all the activities that we are involved with, and handsomely. During his budget speech, Foreign Affairs Minister Wilfred Ellerington spoke on Guatemala's claim on Belize, as he was expected to. Minister Ellerington spoke specifically about the situation surround the Sarstoon River and Sarstoon Island. During his address, Ellerington reiterated the government's position in taking the issue to the International Court of Justice. We as a government believe in the power of diplomacy. We believe in peace. We believe that the brain is certainly much more powerful than brawn. We believe that the pen is mightier than the sword and that we believe that we should leave the professionals to do the job of the professionals. They should, in fact, secure our nation. We don't believe in violence. We don't believe in brute force. We believe that we solve our differences at the court. There is no truth. There is absolutely no truth in the suggestion that, in fact, we have lost the SARS too. Sassoon was always in dispute, and there is absolutely no truth that we are, in fact, soft on the Guatemalans. We have kept our ground. Between the time we got into office and now, we have had no negative incidents, really, to speak of with the Guatemalans, save ones that recently took place involving the the territorial volunteers, and that is particularly worrisome because for the first time we are having civilians coming in contact with the Guatemalan military forces, and that can really cause big problems for all of us. So that is particularly worrisome. But it was in the 2000 that the Guatemalan military had taken some seven of our security people and had them locked up in, in Guatemala itself. And of course, during that early period, they were encouraging settlement in our country. Since we got in office, none of this has happened. The decision to go to the ICJ was orchestrated by the People's United Party. And every one of the attorneys, every foreign minister in the People's United Party have, are on record as supporting going to the ICJ. The tragedy about this whole thing is that the last leader of the party seemed to have been totally confused and couldn't make a decision. Ellerington believes that the ICJ is the last and most passive resort to ending the territorial dispute. While he was speaking on Guatemala's territorial claim on Belize, Minister of Foreign Affairs turned his attention to the media of Belize. 
Minister Wilfred Ellerington criticized the media for offering a disservice to the public, stating that media houses twist and turn his words to make him look bad and incite hate. However, with that in mind, Ellerington has decided that he will no longer give solo interviews on the Guatemalan issue to any media house. I find it so incomprehensible, Mr. Speaker, that we have so many knowledgeable people about the Guatemalan issue. And whenever the issue comes up, especially involving the, 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 the SARS tool, the most prominent media find the least informed person to interview ad nauseum. People who they interview can't even talk, can't even articulate their views properly. But the media invariably seek them out. What are you trying to do to your population? In my view, it's an injustice. You're, it's, it's a, you're doing a disservice to your population at a, of, with an incident that is so important. Mr. Speaker, it will be seen that during the, the national elections, I never once, never once raised this issue. Notwithstanding the fact that night and day, night and day, I was accused of giving away Guatemala, or giving away to Guatemala parts of Belize and the SARS too. To the point where when I went on the street, people would look at me and curse me. Nothing was further from the truth. But I never responded. And I never responded because this issue is too important to banalize it and trivialize it and to make it a political football. It's too important. I have resolved, along with with, 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 your, with your team, really, to make sure that I will not give any more interviews to any newspaper or to any television station unless I do it jointly with a member of the opposition party. Because this is a national issue, and we must speak with one voice. The practice of the media has been to come, take your view, and then twist it in a way you don't recognize it seeming to have one thought in mind, confuse the public and try to make you look bad. They have not had much success, but I can tell you they don't give up. Well, Mr. Speaker, that era is ended. I will no longer give any interview on my own. Welcoming Elringdon's decision to not speak with the media without a representative from the People's United Party was Caribbean Shores Area Representative Kareem Musa. Musa also called on Elrington's removal as the Minister of Foreign Affairs.